Greetings to all of you, my dear sisters and brothers and my dear friends, all of you are welcome. This is your Pastor Yanni. I hope that all of you had a wonderful weekend and that you had special moments with your family or church members or whatever you did in a weekend. Maybe some were having a adventure in a a trip they did or whatever. The only thing that matters is that you have joy in it, that you really have a moment that you said, well, this was nice. And maybe sometimes when it goes much in, well, it can go also in another direction where our days are not, you know, I say, well, whatever. But it still has a meaning in looking back and then make, we say, a diagnose of it and see what it gave you. So let's come with me to a new study and devotion about our humility the beauty of holiness and for today it is the humanity of Jesus I among you as he that serves Luke 22 27 I am among you as he that serves in the gospel of John we have the inner life of our Lord led upon to, open to us. And Jesus speaks frequently of his relationship to the Father. The motives by which he is guided and his knowledge of the power and spirit in which he acts. Though the word humble does not occur. There is no other place in scripture where we see his humility so clearly. We have already said that this attribute is nothing more than the simple consent of the creature to let God be all, in which the creature surrenders itself to his working alone. In Jesus we will see how both as the Son of God in heaven and as man upon earth, he took the place of total servitude and gave God the honor and the glory which is due him. What he thought about humility was made true in himself. He that humbles himself shall be exalted. As it is written, he humbled himself and therefore God also has highly exalted him. Listen to the words in which our Lord speaks of his relationship to the Father. And notice how often he uses the words not and nothing of himself. The not I in which Paul expresses his relationship to Christ in the very spirit of what Christ says about his relationship to the Father. And maybe you can write the scripture verse and book down. Here it comes. The Son cannot do nothing of himself. John chapter 5, 19. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is not is just because I seek not my own will. John 5.30. I do not receive glory from man, John 5, 41. For I came down from the heaven, not to my own will, but the will of him that sent me, John 6, 38. My doctrine is not mine, John 7, 16. I have not come of myself, John 7, 28. I do nothing of myself, John 8, 28. 
Neither did I come of myself, but he sent me. John 8, 42. I seek not my own glory. John 8, 50. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. John 14, 10. The word which you have heard is not mine. John 14, 24. If I was too fast, you can always go back and listen from the beginning because it's in the very beginning that these scriptures are given to you. These words open to us the deepest roots of Christ's life and work. They tell us how it was possible for the Almighty God to work His mighty redemptive work through Christ. They show that Christ considered the state of his heart in his position as the Son of Man. They teach us what the essential nature and life is, which Christ accomplished and now communicates through his word. It is this, he was nothing, but God might be all. He submitted himself with his will and his powers entirely for the Father to work in him, of his own power, his own will, and his own glory. He did not consider himself, but gave himself completely to the Father of his whole mission, with all his works and his teaching. Of all this he said, I am nothing, the Father is all. This life of entire self-denial of absolute submission and dependence upon the Father's will, Christ found to be one of perfect peace and joy. He lost nothing by giving all to God. He honored his trust, did all for him, and then exalted him to his own right hand in glory. Because Christ humbled himself in this way before God and sought God in all things, he found it possible to humble himself before man too, and to be the servant of all. His humility was simply the surrender of himself to God, to allow God to do in him what he pleased. It didn't matter to him what man might say about him or to do him. It is in this state of mind, in this spirit and disposition, that the redemption of Christ has its value and effectiveness. The very reason we are made partakers of Christ is to bring us to this disposition. This is the true self-denier to which our Savior calls us, the acknowledgement that self has nothing good in it, except as an empty vessel which God must fill. Its claim to be or do anything may not for a moment be allowed. It is in this above and before everything in which the conformity to Jesus exists, the being and doing nothing of ourselves, that God may be all. Here we have the root and nature of true humility. It is because this is not understood nor pursued that our humility is so superficial and feeble. We must learn from Jesus how he is meek and lonely of heart. He teaches us where true humility takes its proper place and finds its strength, I mean, its proper place. This happens when we take hold of the knowledge that it is God who works all in all, that our responsibility is to yield to himself in perfect surrender and dependence, in full compliance to be and to do nothing of ourselves. Christ came to reveal and pass on a life to God that came through death to sin and self. If we feel this life is too difficult for us and beyond our reach, it must motivate us even more to seek it in Him. It is the indwelling Christ who will live 
in us this life, meek and lowly. If you long for this, let us above everything seek the holy secret of the knowledge of the nature of God, the secret which all of nature, every creature, and every child of God is to be the witness, is the realization that it is nothing but a vessel, a channel through which the living God can manifest the riches of his wisdom, power, and goodness. The root of all goodness and grace, of all faith and acceptable worship, is that we know we have nothing but what we receive and bow in deepest humility to wait upon God for it. This humility was not simply a fleeting thought, wakening up and exercised when he thought of God, but the very expression of his whole life. Jesus was just as humble in his relationship with man as with God. He considered himself to be the servant of God for the man whom God made and loved. As a natural consequence, as he considered himself to be the servant of man, that through him God might do his work of love. He never for a moment thought to seek his own honor or declare his power to defend himself. His whole attitude was that of a life yielded to God. It is not until Christians studied the humility of Jesus as the very essence of his redemption, as the only true relationship to the Father, that the terrible lack of actual heavenly humility will become a burden and a sorrow. Our ordinary religion must be set aside and we must receive humility from Christ. This humility is evidence of Christ within us. Brothers and sisters, beautiful people, are you clothed with humility? Ask your daily life. Ask Jesus. Ask your friends. Ask the world. Begin to praise God that there is opening up to you. In Jesus, a heavenly humility of which you have hardly known. A humility true, which blessings you possibly have never yet experienced can come in to you. So many people have a very misunderstanding of the word humility. They feel it like They're not worth anything. They're just nothing. And this is such a wrong translation of humility. A wrong understanding. Humility is giving up your complete self. Some people think, well, I don't have anything anymore. That I possibly thought I got something to give. That's not. It is just giving up everything. It's a life process. And we need to live the process of life. That is our best experience. And even the worst experience will become a very useful experience to use in your present life. Of course, if we are able to give ourselves in complete surrender, to really come to the understanding what really humility means go back and listen again if you need it whatever you do with it the most important thing is that it will help you in your adventure with Christ in God we have our being we have our existence and everything flows and comes back from God my beautiful people Take it for a full hundred percent. Giving yourself to God is everything. It's the most powerful, beautiful, amazing thing that will happen.
Don't be ashamed to ask your friends, am I humble? Feel not ashamed of this courage to help to ask yourself or brothers and sisters, am I? It's really powerful. May the Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, my dear ones. This is your Pastor Yeti. I love you guys. Bye.